Okay, welcome. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use Descartes' rule of signs to help us determine the possible number of positive and negative zeros. So when I look at a problem like this, the first thing I notice is that I have a degree 2. So therefore, that means I'm only going to have, I can only have a maximum number of two zeros. So what Descartes' rule of signs says is I need to look at the variations of the signs of my coefficients. And however many variation of, co of signs I have, that's how many zero or um, that's how many positive real zeros I have for h of x. And then I do the same thing for h of negative x for my negative real zeros. Well, to find the positive real zeros, I notice that I have one change and another change. I go from positive to a negative, then a negative to a positive, meaning I have two positive zeros. So if I have two positive zeros and I'm only allowed to have two zeros, is it possible for me to have any negative zeros? No, right? But let's just take it out just so I can show you how it works. So the negative zeros, you plug in negative or absolute value or negative x. So I have 4 negative x squared minus 8 times negative x plus 3. So I have negative x squared, which is x squared times 4. So that remains the same. Negative x times negative x is a positive 8x plus 3. And notice there's no variation of sign, so there's 0 negative zeros. And that's all, the po that's all really the Descartes rule of signs is going to allow us to use, is just looking at the possible positive or negative real zeros. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed.